Welcome to our AM 101 today. Just a reminder is that this will be recorded and will be archived on our YouTube channel. I will send a follow-up email to everybody who registered with the link to the YouTube channel, as well as any of the meeting materials. Please keep yourself muted and you can put questions in the chat. And with that, welcome to Energize Your New Agent Orientation. I'd like to first introduce our panelists. We have Andrew Blackburn, Bobby Jordan, Carla Dane, Ruben Gonzalez, and our lovely mediator, Emily Horn. Hello. Thank you, Peggy. Um, I'm really excited to be facilitating this conversation today because um, we are going to dispel the whole orientation that Carla just gave me that word right before we got on here. Orientation, no more. Um, new member orientation is one of those necessities that isn't always the most exciting, but I hope today we can find um, this panel is going to share some of their creative ideas to get to get their members more engaged and um, use it as a true opportunity um, to be one of those first impressions of your association. Um, and for new members, I think that's a really big opportunity for, for the locals to, to engage them early. So we will just dive right in. And um, I think the first thing I'd love to ask you all is what your main goal or purpose is of new, your new member orientation. We all know it's in our bylaws and it's of necessity, like I said, but beyond that, um, what's your goal? What's, what do you want to, what do you want the member to get out of your new member orientation? I'll just start with Carla, if that's okay. I think she's muted. <laughs> I think she's muted. Okay, we're going to work There we on go. That. It's like, you can't unmute yourself. I'm like, okay. Um, well, I think that the, you know, from doing this for so many, so many years, I think the more, the most important thing is you can't cover everything that you want to cover in the session that you have. So this is kind of like an appetizer. This is, we're going to introduce you to a lot of different topics. We're going to give you a little bit to digest, and then we're going to have you come back for training. We're going to have you come back to meetings and events. So to get them going in the right direction, give them the resources, like a cheat sheet, so that they can come back to us for what, what they need. Awesome. I like the appetizer analogy. Um, Andrew, can you share with us what, what your intentions are, what you like you want that that new uh, that newbie to come away with after your orientation. Sure. It, two things. One, one just like Carla, we know we can't get them to learn everything on the way in. So, so for for me and for us, the first thing is just to have them realize that they are part of this community of realtors. That for us as Sierra North Valley realtors, let them know that they are not just part of a specific office or independence or anything like that. And the second thing is we really try and hammer home that they have these incredible staff resources at our association. We're only about 650 members. So it's very easy for us to say, you know, there are three staff, you can know us by name. We can know you by name. If you have a question, walk into our office or call us or whatever. And, and that, that has been huge because they're like, didn't I hear you talk about X, Y, or Z? And we can go, yup. And what do you need help with? I love that. So you're planting some seeds um, because I think a lot of times I, I, I can understand how it might feel like drinking from a fire hose, you know, for a real true new member, a new licensee, because there is a lot to our organizations and we do a lot for the members. Um, so Bobby, um, do you have anything to add to that in terms of what, you know, your intentions are in your orientation? Well, we have a lot of Laguna specific things here since we're a little bit different. So we cover a lot of Laguna only things like you have to have a business license to sell in Laguna Beach. Um, we also have a historical preservation society. We have a design review board, um, a special way to order the real property reports. There's a lot of things that we cover, a special sign ordinance just for Laguna. We cover a lot of Laguna specific in our orientation. Oh, that's awesome. So a lot of locality um, there that's going to help them in their transactions, obviously, and things they have to know. Um, Ruben, what about you? What, what's your, what are your intentions? Um, we're a small association. Um, we have about 270 uh, primary members. Um, so we're, we're very uh, small in, in, in the sense of, of community. So what we try to do here is make sure that they, A, kind of um, piggybacking on Andrew, uh, what he was talking about, let them know what the realtor brand is. Um, let them know the code of ethics. Um, 
uh, allow them to see what tools from the state, national, and local level are available um, for them, and just kind of getting their their the bread and butter basics uh, so that they know how to maneuver around our our multiple listing service, so they know how to use a finance uh, hotline, the legal hotline. Um, you know, CenturyLock is is our uh, you know that our lockbox provider. So we kind of uh, just kind of ease them into everything that they have available um, as being a new member um, to them and, and let them um, see where they can find these tools, how they can use them, and then follow up later with education later on to make sure that we're, we're continuing training um, with the tools that, you know, the, the classes and, and the education that, and that we provide for them thereafter. Awesome. That's a lot. It's a lot of information and I, what I'm hearing from all of you. And I think we'll dig into that in a little bit about how to make that interesting, which is challenging when you have so much to share um, and do it in a, in a digestible way for the attendees. Um, I'll just go, I'll go to Carla. I think you may have the largest association by membership size here on this panel. And so I, I would love to hear about how you've maybe transitioned throughout the pandemic in terms of what you used to do with your new member orientation any adaptations you've made in this virtual environment and any um, any lessons learned along the way during that, that shift. Sure, and I'd, and I'd like to give credit, my one of my staff members is on this call as well that has been instrumental in making sure that we've transitioned to a virtual environment. So she's done a really great job um, coordinating the timing, um, making it interactive, but we are fully virtual right now. Um, making sure that we're providing value. And I think that it's really hard to be on a Zoom call for, you can't do six hours. So ours is from 9.30 to noon. Um, one of the things that I think we do the best is we have a panel of individuals who come in from different, you know, an affiliate, a seasoned agent and a YPNer and having, making sure that it's as interactive as possible, as many different speakers come in and, and, and keep the keep the flow moving. Because I think we can do a lot in that time frame, but we just have to, you know, they're giving us their precious time. We're, we're trying to make the most of it. I think that's really important, the, the interactive piece, I think, especially on the screen. I know we've all learned that that's really important because um, it makes sure everyone's awake and paying attention. Anyone else doing virtual new member orientations now um, that you weren't? Bobby, sounds like you are. We are doing virtual. Um, we make transition back into in-person um, and we shortened ours for two hours. We make sure they take the code of ethics before for their test. And then we start our presentation. And during our Zoom call, we have, I don't host it. I have a chair who hosts it. It's a volunteer, it's one of the realtors and they're the MC. And then we have seven speakers. We have speakers from MLS, from speakers from CAR. We have a historian, we have our president, we have affiliates, we have escrow title companies. So they're doing the speaking. So it constantly changes out a different speaker on the screen within their two hours of Zoom. So it kind of keeps their, their attention. And we put together a PowerPoint. So at the end, um, after they've completed the class, we email them PowerPoint of everything that's been covered so that they have that for notes. Because when we were live, we used to give them a large packet of all kinds of paper. Um, so now we created all that onto a PowerPoint and they can have that um, since we're not in person. Nice. That's, it's nice to have a cult, something they can take away a tangible as well. Um, Andrew Rubin, you doing anything different? Are you still doing in person, a virtual or a mix perhaps? You can jump right in. We're actually, um, we went from an eight hour to a six hour. Um, obviously we used to have uh, the property inspectors and the insurance, you know, do uh, different types of uh, raffles throughout, but obviously we can't hand them over a raffle prize um, during a Zoom meeting. So um, one of our, um, our affiliates uh, told us about the Wheel of Names. So what our, my assistant does is she puts everybody's name in there and we're able to get them, you know, their e-gift card or what have you. So we always, you know, try to, you know, maneuver around different obstacles that, as we had to do it um, via Zoom. But I think now, um, A, the, the best thing about it is it made myself and um, my assistant really get good at running zoom meetings where before I know we had to make it we had to make make it available but it was most it was always in person this is this obviously during covid we had to do it virtually which forced us to to use zoom and get decent at it but on top of that we had to keep that engagement that and interaction as well throughout so um, we would definitely change speakers, um, topics, you know, as, as much as possible. So it didn't, it wasn't, you know, the same person kind of doing the whole, you know, the whole presentation. So just to keep them interactive. 
and we, we would like to really touch on Q&A to make sure that they were being, you know, um, interactive uh, and really paying attention to, to the actual uh, member orientation because a lot of them, it was easy for, easy for them to zone out during a Zoom meeting because obviously they were tired of Zoom meetings after a while. But we did have to become more creative on that end. And uh, now we're going back to live, but we will offer it hybrid. And now we know how to do both. So that was something that was a challenge and I'm happy that we, we can you know, adapt to now more awesome. easier. So in your six hours, that's, that's a long time, especially in a virtual setting or even if, um, to dedicate a whole day. Um, do you, I, I wanted to ask if you include, do you show the new, new uh, I'm sorry, the code of ethics orientation for new members during that, is that part of that six hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely, you know, share the screen and, and let them view that. And uh, a, a large part of it uh, is is our, our MLS uh, vendor goes in and does, uh, you know, the MLS training in the beginning. So a lot of them really take from that, you know, the zip forms training, their bread and butter as well. They're going to be using the zip forms a lot. So uh, those will take up a large part of it, which I think a lot of them really need that information because when they're newbies, they're learning how to maneuver around the multiple listing service, how to input you know, the new listing, how to get a CMA report or what have you. So to me, those are the, the key things that they're really going to be using, you know, 90% of the time. I love that. I think that's pretty unique from what I understand, Ruben, the, the way that you're doing that, because it sounds like you've incorporated a lot of hands-on, well, maybe not hands-on, but show and tell training. Um, so it's beyond almost an orientation of this is what's available. It's like you're doing deep dives into the, some of the software that they're going to use on a daily basis. So I could see that being incredibly valuable to a brand new agent. So kudos. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew, what are you doing? Um, anything new and, and adapted to this virtual environment? New, new to me in that we're going to be full in person starting tomorrow. So I've, I've just clicked over a year here and we, we've been virtual. Uh, and so we're doing new and in person. And I just got my first, um, email from a presenter that said that they feel like it, they have a little cold coming on. So we're going to, we're going to do a hybrid and we're going to see how it goes. So I need everyone on the Zoom to cross their fingers for me, but we're, we're set up. Um, there was a previous session with all of us on how to do a uh, really good conferencing in. So we've got the hardware and the infrastructure, so it should be good. But yeah, the surprise hybrid is what we are doing now. Uh, good vibes he headed your way, um, and you'll have to let us know. I know everyone will want to know exactly how that's going. I mean, isn't that the truth? The best laid plans, um, you know, this is this is what we do. We problem solve, right? It sounds like you're doing it really well. Um, so let's talk about um, creativity and and creating some engagement. Um, and we talked a little bit about interact having some interactive component is important. But who's doing something? that you're injecting a little bit creativity that you're um, a little maybe even out of the box to keep it interesting and engaging for your members. Anyone have anything fun or interesting to share on that? We don't have anything fun, but when we start to lose attention, we will break and ask everyone to uh, introduce themselves and tell us what company they're with for. And we'll do it throughout the meeting. So you never know when you're gonna be called on and kind of makes you start paying attention. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be called on better. I better pay attention. <laughs> I like that. And it kind of um, helps with accountability to your point, right? Um, and also satisfies that whole networking or at least have some sort of component on that front too. Anyone else doing anything? Um, icebreakers, Andrew, what do, you, what do you guys do? So we have a safety component at our association and it used to be just lecture format. And uh, we have this just absolute personality member who does this section and he usually does this skit that involves all kinds of he's a great guy but he's eccentric and so it definitely gets people's attention and he's just started a new thing where he has created this like 10 question quiz on how safe are you on a scale of one to ten and it's the usual stuff like are you going alone have you met with a person individually beforehand but but um uh, my favorite one is um it's stuff like, you know, are you wearing your nicest watch, your nicest jewelry to the showing? And you can kind of watch people, you know, they're doing it because they're tired of the lecture format and they'll start checking these boxes and like you can watch people's heads kind of go up or kind of dip down as they get to certain questions and they, they re and like, 
it's nothing groundbreaking, but it is different than a lecture. And there are a couple questions where it's like, well, yeah, I want to look good to my clients. So of course I wear my Rolex or whatever. And, and, um, I have found that to be this just super small, you know, we print out however many copies we need to put it on the table and people like having something to scribble on. So that that's been really successful for us. I love that. And that's the engagement factor right there. And people actually make them feel of just um, a guest, an attendee. Um, so anyone else want to add anything? Taurus, we have something we have something in process. So one of the things um, our incoming president, and I think it was a great opportunity that we went to the leadership summit in Chicago. Um, we we really liked the interactive game that you can play on your phone. So we're using the Kahoot app to gamify uh, code of ethics because that's the last part of the, and it, it could be the driest. And it's great that you, we, we make them do the two and a half hour NAR. So we have the record of that, but we're gonna, we're gonna work instead of just reading the code of ethics, we're gonna try to you know incentivize it with prizes and things like that. So that's in progress. So as soon as we have that completed, um, I'd love to share it with everyone. Oh, that's awesome. You just made me think of something Adina and I did for the president's um, orientation program that we staff um, that we do once a year. And that was a Jeopardy game. And it's an awesome, awesome um, app that we found online that I think is like $5 a month. It's really inexpensive. And it was a fun way to orient new presidents. And I think that has a lot of similarities to obviously this this topic we're talking about two different aspects of the organization. And we had three contestants and there was some competition going. And I mean, even longtime presidents who were coming back being recycled learned, said they learned some new things about our code of ethics, our organization's history. Um, and Adina and I would be happy to share the content with that with you because uh, that's the part that took a little bit of work. So maybe we'll put, we'll put some of that in the, in the follow-up email today if that's helpful for any of you. Um, so do you, so I know De, uh, Bobby said she, you, you give handouts at the end. Anyone else give some really um, stellar, tangible takeaways um, to your group, or is it just, uh, just the, the experience of being there? Anyone else? No, we're done with paper. You, they used to walk away with a lot of paper, and that's, so we're saving a lot of trees there. We used What's to that? have a little USB port that we would put everything in for them, Emily. Nice. And I, I mean, yeah. I guess now we can even put those things on a website and have them right. access that way. So look how, how far we've come, <laughs> right? <laughs> we, we do give them resources via Dropbox. So there's a number of, of folders that they have so they can access and save it. You know, they can save to their own Dropbox. So it's in a, in a location that's easy for them. Nice. So let's talk a little bit about how the bylaws um, come into play here because we know that our bylaws are all a little different, but I know it's, a, it's an NAR requirement that a new member must complete an orientation, right, with their local association. And there's a time frame. Everyone's time frame um, is probably pretty similar, but there, there might be a few, few differences between local bylaws. Tell me a little bit about uh, the timing that you require your new member. Once you, you get a new member, you, you submit, their application is complete, they're official, active. What does that timeline look like? And um, Andrew, I'll start with you. What does your timeline look like? And, and, and do you make any accommodations um, in terms of if there's scheduling conflicts and how, how do you make sure that you're being, um, I guess, as you know, making it accessible to your new members in an easy way? So we, we hold orientation quarterly and uh, I basically will give them one free pass. We all have stuff come up, especially in this industry. Um, one free pass and then uh, we'll have some individuals will have like a legitimate reason to need another free pass. You know, you never know what's coming. But usually after about two times, we've learned the person's name. They're on a little list. Again, smaller association. So we, we have a paper list that we kind of keep an eye on and we'll jot notes. And after those couple times, we might, you know, they might get a, a personal touch from the, the AE about, you know, we'd really like you to come to the office. And, um, Oftentimes, what we'll do is uh, we'll we'll use it as an invitation for them to personally come in and, and do an orientation with us. And uh, it's you know, oh, you're not busy. I mean, you're busy on Tuesday. Well, great. What about Wednesday? Or Wednesday too? What about Thursday? And eventually, they run out of reasons to not be able to come in. And then I've got them 
one on one. And uh, we actually, it ends up being very productive because then they do get that face time with the staff and they, they, they may not get the normal orientation that's a production, but they get the same information, usually in a little bit more condensed and they can get personalized questions answered. Wow. I mean, that service, Andrew, I, I commend you for being so accommodating. And I think that just obviously speaks to the level of service that you and your staff are committed to. Uh, and as a new member, I would think that's pretty impressive that you're, you bend over backwards. And I know a smaller association, you have a little bit of leeway to, to maybe make those, those modifications. Um, anyone else, maybe on the opposite end of the spectrum, anyone pretty like cut and dry about your timeline and has that ever had, you know, some difficult circumstances or consequences? Or does everyone have some leniency there? I think all of us, you know, uh, try to be lenient as, as much as possible and, and uh, the, the staff at my association uh, and Kendall and Janelle, they're very, they're, you know, they, they're really great at follow up and say, hey, we noticed you didn't, the bylaws say 90 days, but as long as we can get, get, get the NAR stuff done, okay, we understand you miss, you miss the live, or, you know, um, Zoom call. We understand that, but we need you to do the NAR stuff. So we, yeah. we try as much as possible. And thankfully, I only learned the name of one member this year that didn't complete it. Um, so, you know, they, they get on a list and we get to know them very well, but we try to be accommodating, but we just, you know, over communicate, hey, you need to do this. This is why it's important before we send that letter of, or email out saying, hey, look, we're going to have to suspend your membership because we do need you to, to comply. Yeah, usually, I mean, that you, you want to avoid, obviously, we, we do what we can to avoid that, but that is where it comes down to. And um, as association, I know you, you take that responsibility very seriously. Um, I wanted to ask, so we've talked about quite a few topics that um, just organically, what as part of your, your orientation, we talked about code of ethics, um, you know, Ruben talked about training on the, you know, talked about the MLS, um, zip form, the locality, you know, the nuances of your local um, ordinances that, that affect transactions. What other topics are like essential to include on your agenda for you, your new member orientation? What are like your maybe top five that you feel like if someone's starting or want to revamp their orientation that they just, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the core of, of the content? Andrew, what do you think? Uh, I I'll, I'll save everyone the top five because I'm sure everyone else has, you know, their list, uh, and I get to go first, so I'm gonna I'm gonna force that. But but the one that that when I inherited this program from Peggy, thank you Peggy for all the work you did in advance to set me up for success, um, was uh, we we actually have a member do uh, contract timelines, which as a staff person I thought was a total waste of time. You can figure that out on your own. It's your job to figure that out. I, I, I really thought I was going to scrap it, um, but I was like, let's do, a, let's do an orientation or two. And that ended up being a surprise favorite of our, of our new member orientation attendees. Even people that have been on the job for six months, we get a ton of positive feedback about having an experienced agent come in and walk people through the timeline of the contract. So, you know, not, not like we all have gaping holes in our orientation or want to add more time to it. But if you're looking for stuff, contract timelines has been a surprise hit for us. And it speaks to the real, the transaction and what the member really cares about, because that is, um, those are the dots that connect to, you know, their livelihood and actually making a living um, in this new role that they're playing. Um, Ruben, how about you? What's another, you, you shared a couple of really good ones. What is uh, like a standout core topic I, that you always make sure is talked about? I think usually the legislative part of it, we usually have the legislative liaison chime in, do a portion of it, um, really explain the realtor party, what it stands for, and really how we're represented at the state level. I think it's confusing a lot of times and kind of complicated. So I usually have the liaison do, you know, the half hour or what have you um, talking about that. But I think it's important for them to know how, um, you know, CAR fights for, you know, uh, you know, the rights of the, you know, the real estate industry. You know, once again, uh, the realtor party, not Democrat, Republican or what have you. It's just uh, fighting for, our, you know, our, our agents. And I think it's important for them to know that. I think a lot of them don't have any idea at that level what is done on the bigger uh, spectrum and on a bigger scale um, with, you know, CAR. And I think it's important to always have that in there as, as uh, something that's usually brand new to our new members. 
It's great. Yeah. I, and I think that that's such an important topic. And I do think that's the beginning of that conversation and it has to be in the forefront of the orientation. And if they're, and I just encourage um, staff, any association staff who are less familiar with REF and the advocacy activities of CAR and your local association, really um, dig into that, educate yourself, because I think it's really largely up to the leadership in terms of the AE, the staff, the, the boards of directors at the local level to, to lead the charge and really be advocates uh, for that, for, for our advocacy program, because if we don't, I don't, you know, how do, how do the members going to care if we, we don't really understand it um, in a deep way ourselves? So anyone else, what other topics, Bobby, what other topics have we not mentioned that you think are just essential to make sure uh, is included? We do, we have a representative from CR MLS come in and uh, talk about the top five violations and how to avoid them. That's very key to our members. Um, and it's a very lively discussion. It's very fun. They do it in a very fun way. Um, and another section we have is a, a, one of our affiliates, a title and escrow rep, will come in and talk about the whole gamut of title and escrow, all the stages. They've got videos they show. It, they're funny, interactive videos. So it's really great to have that knowledge um, for the new members. I love that. Lots of good topics. Carla, you want to add anything? Any other topics we haven't covered? Um, we, we have them watch, in addition to doing their COE online, we have them watch the videos that NAR makes available on fair housing, um, bias override and antitrust. And I don't know if you remember for dating myself, there was a really old antitrust video that had like the bongo drum introduction. So thankfully, I, I mean, the new one is kind of funny and makes it interactive, but it's funny. Sometimes I still have to stop conversations and say, Hey, you can't talk about commissions in this meeting. Um, but I, I think having that in advance, those modules, because it's a lot easier to watch something at your leisure as opposed to sitting in a meeting and playing a video. So we've gotten away from doing that for, for, uh, for all of those. I think it's great to have multimedia kind of as part of um, your, your focus for the new member orientations, because no one can just listen to someone for six hours, four hours, two hours, however long your orientation is. And I love like doing mixed media in it, whether that's, um, yeah, audio clips or, you know, show and tells, videos, like you said, I think are great. Um, I'm going to go off script here a little bit because I just have a question for y'all that I would love to uh, know your thoughts on. And that's about what CAR could possibly do to, to help you with your new member orientations, whether that's producing more content, um, having something more structured in place that you could depend on. Any ideas here of how Sierra can better support you or anything you're missing that you need better resources from us? Can, can you just loan us Gov to come up to our, our office whenever whenever we want? That would, that would make my members so happy. You know, that would make Gov so happy. There is <laughs> nothing he misses more than being on the road. He's the only one who is like, this, you know, virtual stay, work from home is for the birds. Like he, he, he loved that, Andrew. Um, we'll, we'll work, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. Anyone uh, for else? Some, for some reason, Gov likes to come down, uh, during the middle of the summer down here and here, uh, it, it gets about 115, 120 degrees and he would love to come in July when it's just burning outside. And, and it was it, besides a tri-tip lunch that we would have, but I think, uh, that's always a plus, but I think that the AE resources that's, that's made available at CR.org is huge. We've used the templates before just as guidelines, but pretty much anything and everything there is, is I mean, you obviously um, CR used to provide us with the, the, uh, C, the CDs before that we would play during our new member orientation, which is great. And then obviously now we can do the YouTubes. So I think as it's constantly, you know, obviously technology is changing, we can still use those um, YouTubes and what have you to, to allow the members to, you know, take a little break from us, you know, maybe becoming monotone or what have you and, and use those, uh, you know, YouTubes that, that are made available through CAR. But quite honestly, I think uh, you guys have done a great job of giving us these AE resources that we can click on and are constantly being updated and uh, just allowing us to, you know, give them the, the breakdown of what their dues go to, you know, under the line, above the line, you know, what they're, what they're, you know, bang for their buck and where their dues are going, local, CAR and NER and what, what, you know, the, the, they're the specific contributions that that they could be you know uh giving to haf and raf what what those mean so i really do think that cr has done a great job overall and and i i 
I use CAR more than I use NAR, quite honestly. But I mean, it's just you guys um, do a great job with the with the local associations. So thank you. Thanks, Ruben. Appreciate that. So I have a question. Has anyone considered doing a pre-recorded or you know, a packaged online orientation? And obviously you'd have to build in some accountability to um, be able to make sure that that person watched it kind of like our code of ethics requirement, but any intentions of going in that direction um, to a non-live option? No, I'm seeing head shaking no. I think, I mean, I would assume the engagement factor and the opportunity to have that touch point with the member is too valuable to be able to waste that on, on something like that. Um, so the, the thing I, I think about with a lot of the activities and events that we've now been able to go virtual on, like a new member orientation, it has a lot of benefits, but one component that I think we could all agree the Zoom environment has been the most challenging is that connection piece, right? So like that natural networking that occurs at a meeting either before, after, during, in the hallways of our events is, is missing and has to be very intentional now. So, it, and I know for new members, I think that connection with each other, not just with the association and you and your staff or your directors, it's about with each other and being there for each other. I know Peggy Mead and I were new AEs the same year in what, Peggy, 2004, something like that, 2004, 18 years ago, it's been a, it's been a minute. And we bonded over being new together. You know, I, we were commiserating together and it, it gave me so much, um, not, I wouldn't say joy, but comfort. It gave me comfort knowing that someone else was going through the same trials and tribulations that I was. And I can imagine that's very similar for our new members. Now it's a little different. They might feel a little bit more competitive, but I think in this marketplace, um, there, you know, there's a lot of more cooperation um, than, than, than competition and hungry for information. So with all that said, how are we addressing um, that networking component, that, that connection? Like how are you facilitating the connection um, through this new member orientation or even otherwise for, for new members specifically? Anyone feel free to jump in on that. Well, we still have our marketing meetings in person every week. And we do invite our new members to attend the marketing meetings, which is where they pitch their properties. And we have a speaker every week. We have breakfast. So I think they do a lot of networking there as well as in their own offices. But they get to do some in-person there. Other than that, we're on Zoom for orientation. I wonder, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Andrew. I was just going to echo what Bobby said. We 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 get to still do weekly get-togethers to, to pitch properties, and that's that's a big selling point for us is meet each other here and then we'll see you next week to to get to see everyone else and you know we'll feed you on all that kind of stuff and that really has allowed us to build a culture love that i wonder what it would look like if you, you know for a virtual new member orientation i'm just picturing breakout sessions or like a round robin of like different zoom rooms that you can um, put, you know, the new members in to kind of create like some smaller groups and feelings of connection and, um, and bonding. Anyway, some good ideas. It, Carla? We, we still take the time during Zoom to have everybody on the call introduce themselves. And it's really interesting to hear what the backgrounds of those individuals are. So when they're introducing, you know, I'm making notes that a lot of, a lot of different experiences but we are missing the in the in person. I mean, LA County is probably the most most locked down of all the counties I think so far. Um, but we we are intending to do something live on a monthly basis to have that gathering. We've been doing weekly care. We have a weekly caravan meeting that's virtual, so we invite the new members to attend that. We try to bring some kind of value of a speaker or somebody who's going to. So it's a matter of you know getting them introduced and giving them the resources, but we're still able to, you know, people are getting to know each other. And I know that a lot of the offices are, are still having the office meetings, but it, it's interesting that every association has its own culture, that there are some that are really, really big on in-person meetings, but then there's some, you know, organizations that if you're, if you're at a meeting, if that means you're not busy enough. So trying to break through and getting to that there, there's a value in, in attending because you get to, you get to know people and you get to know people in the business. You know, I think about the new member journey. I think of them as, a, you know, new members as such an important segment of the membership and they have unique needs, right? Being a brand new licensee, 
licensee has such unique needs. And I think of them also as like a blank slate, you know, they, this is probably their first opportunity, their first impression of organized real estate and what's available and like turning them on to the RAF and really what we do is such an opportunity. And it just makes me wonder if we are um, not taking it, taking that opportunity to not, to look past just the new member orientation. And I, there's likely probably a lot of local associations already doing this, but I wonder how that orientation can evolve into something more um, along that new member journey. Does anyone have any thoughts about that? Um, because just that, that, one, that one piece, like you said, is an appetizer. So anyone doing this, so I guess we're going off a little bit from the orientation itself, but really talking about diving into that new member segment. Is anyone really doing anything with those new members and, and um, creating value for them in a unique or targeted way? I think uh, what's, what's occurred at our association, once again, we're super small, is that a lot of the speakers are past presidents, uh, past directors. And uh, what I've noticed is so that we don't constantly have that revolving door being so small of um, directors and officers. I believe a lot of the times um, that networking takes place during those orientations a lot, because what they'll do is they'll kind of take them under their wing and really say, listen, after you're, you know, you've been here a year or two, you might want to start looking at, at possibly sitting in on um, a director's meeting or I'm sorry, putting your name in the hat to possibly uh, be a director and really get involved to kind of see how what goes on in the, you know, obviously at the association and, and kind of behind the scenes um, policies and so forth. So I think uh, that's kind of a, that extra level where a lot of um, my past directors and officers have really kind of mentored um, the current directors and officers that we have now. I've been here for 14 years and it's been, I've, I've had great leadership. You know, I can honestly say that I'm very proud of, but I do, I did always see that. And it was uh, kind of a direct correlation when they would see them at, at, at an education meeting, a seminar or orientation, and they kind of met, talked, and then later on just saw how they were doing, if they had any questions, and then from there on talked about leadership. So I think um, above and beyond, I think it really did help um, constantly keep those, you know, that those new directors and officers um, coming through the association and really understanding how it works. I really love that mentor, that mentorship that you're talking about and the personal connection you're creating. And I think um, you're taking advantage of it. When in a smaller association, I think that in some ways is um, it's a more direct approach that you can take because of that everyone you know knows each other for the most part and takes care of each other in a, in a different way. And I, I love that about, about communities like that. Um, so, and Carla, I really appreciate what you said about getting to know what these new members did before. What, what's their story? Because maybe even having a checkoff, you know, I think usually when people are passionate about something, they're usually going to be good at it. And so taking an opportunity as this captive audience, to even maybe even a checklist of things that they're interested in to, and, and, you know, being a new member, they're probably not ready to raise their hand and sign up for a committee, you know, the first year, but, you know, it's a data collection opportunity to really understand where their passions lie. And maybe someone that was a communications director before could be a great fit on your marketing team, you know, if you have a committee about that or events team or whatever. So, um, I remember as an AE, I, there are a few uh, people that I would meet at these new member orientations that they are, they're now past presidents of that association. So it really is the entry point into the, your association and, and like peaking that interest and engagement, which, which I think um, is, again, just a big opportunity. I think I've asked all the questions I was planning to ask, but I just want to put it out to the group. Is there anything we didn't cover about the new member orientation, new members in general that you want to make sure to share with our attendees today? Emily, can we ask each of the panelists how often they have orientation and how many attendees they average? Great, great question. Logistics. We, we skipped over that. Yes, Bobby, do you want to start with that? We have ours quarterly and it, go, it ranges from 20 to 30 each class. Quarterly, got it, okay. And does that satisfy, is it a 90 day requirement that your bylaws state as well? Yes. Okay, sounds like yes. Anyone else doing other than quarterly? I think Carla in the chat, you said, did you say every other month? Every other month, we're, we're dark for December, but we're gonna resume, I think uh, February, the first Wednesday in February is our first. And yeah, I love if you want to put in the chat what your association does, I think that would be 
um, interesting too, just to get some group uh, data here. Uh, Andrew, Ruben, how often is yours? Um, we do them quarterly, but um, also being a small association, um, we get a range anywhere from five to uh, 15 people at a time, um, just kind of depending on, on who's, who's, you know, who's joining, but, um, we do try to keep them quarterly. We give them two weeks to do the new member, um, online, um, code of ethics training. So definitely something that they would need to have done prior to the, um, orientation, but definitely we try to do them within every, every uh, quarter. Got it. And Andrew, I, I think you might've mentioned it, but can you remind us your frequency? Qu quarterly and anywhere from about 20 to 30. Got it. Okay, Peggy, I'm sure I missed something else. Please keep me in check. I, I actually have one that wasn't on the list that I gave you, but um, I'm wondering who plans the orientations and chooses the speakers and are, are affiliates involved, that sort of thing? Great question. Well, we're a two-person office here, so it's being myself and my assistant. <laughs> but uh, you know, quite honestly, a lot of the affiliates uh, get involved, the property inspectors, you know, uh, we do have um, appraisers at time that, you know, will, you know, um, you know, title company, you know, they'll talk about title and escrow, obviously, for the new members. But a lot of them are very clever at having uh, Q&As, which allow them to get a, you know, five, ten dollar Starbucks card if they get the answer right. So it's super interactive and we do do that, but we definitely incorporate the affiliates because a lot of times they, they kind of break off and make it, you know, a, a really fun and interactive for the, for our new members. Nice. Anyone else want to add to that? Yes. Um, hi, this is Alex with Palm Springs. And um, we've been incorporating our committee chairs, including the special events committee, which is headed up by the affiliates. Um, and I give them about 10 to 15 minutes to come in, introduce themselves, speak, whatever events are going on. They've, they've got these wonderful little presentations, um, you know, with all the flyers that they're doing and stuff like that. So we get a lot of recruits from that for the, for the committees. And so uh, that seems to be working very well. I think it makes it a little bit more personal to hear right. from the committee chairs. Thank you for that contribution. That's awesome. I'll, I'll step in. I've got a, an education committee that um, uh, does almost all of the planning. Staff will handle the logistics, but the education committee picks the speakers and the topics and the order. Um, and uh, I came from uh, an association in North Carolina where staff did everything. The president came in and was gifted maybe five minutes to welcome people, and they were ceremoniously thrown out, and staff ran it down to the minute. Like I could. I knew at 11.37 a.m. it was my job to walk into the room and, and give the, the, the speech. It was really that close. So it was a leap It was a leap to move to pure committee run and staff basically make sure that we're checking the boxes we need to, but otherwise say, okay. And um, I have to say it's been great because, as I said before, they are including things that as agents they wish they knew or they thought was valuable when they were joining and we actually have some new ish people coming in and we have a mix of people from massive offices and small independents. Um, and it has been really wonderful. And we have implemented, um, we've implemented surveys, you know, post after action surveys that we ask people to fill out and, you know, of 25 people, maybe three will bother to fill it out. And it's usually if they're the happy go lucky person that gives everyone tens and how wonderful or, this specific person was wearing a maroon sweater and I hate maroon sweaters. Um, but, but, but it actually has been great because we as staff combine those into a, a spreadsheet and give those to the committee. And now we have members looking at the work that the association is doing and kind of tracking any changes they like to, to, to see and, you know, tweak things and, it has been this really great way that we have built a staff to member dynamic that I didn't even know would ever exist before and that we can kind of collaborate together. Um, and, and I just created a Google survey and it's very easy because we take the attendee list and email it to them and just see what comes back. And the members on the committee love it and it makes them feel valued and like they're, they're doing something. So is it more of a headache to, to kind of have to, wrangle all these cats to make sure that they know, I mean, 
our speakers must get four reminders just to make sure that we're not there going, ah, uh, what's going on? But um, I found that incredibly valuable to have the committee do the work and uh, have to see that bonding. Wow, that's a that's a big feather in your cap. You've got a committee to be really effective. I think committees can go all which ways and that's a really valuable effort. So Andrew, you sound like you've been at the, that association a little longer than you have. You're a very wise uh, newer AE, congrats on that. Um, anyone else wanna to speak to that? Who does your orientation, how the logistics go? I, I think it's a lot of um, exceptional staff in terms of dealing with the logistics, but we have our, our leadership is very involved. Um, they're going to hear from the president. They're going to hear from a past president, incoming president, our LGR chair. And I think that the one thing, um, and if I can plug the, the, the AE Institute topic, um, if, and, and I'm going to find the, the year that it was presented, but um, Brianna Vanstrom from Boise Real, Regional Realtors did a whole session on orientation, no more. I think her handouts are in that whole, if you, if you order the, the speaking presentation. Um, but the panel and having the panel ask question, question and answer with the panel, your seasoned, your seasoned agent, your newbie, your affiliate person. But the one thing that we can't articulate as staff is what is the value to the member of them being involved in the association? Because we can say, hey, join a committee. They're like, I don't have time for my business. But if you have the president can say, well, this is why I'm involved with um with LGR and it got me on the, the mayor's housing task force and we're redoing the housing element, that, that's that kind of involvement that actually impacts your business. So that, you know, the staff can, can pitch it all day long to join a committee, but what, is it, what does it do for them? And I think they need to hear that from somebody who's a colleague. Yep, that peer to peer, it's impactful. That's, that's a great addition, Carla. And I hope we can get a copy. I, if I have to, we'll be, I'll email Brianna um, and see if she'll provide it because I think that that has a lot of nuggets of information there. Bobby, did you want to add anything? Uh, we are our, our staff. They, they send the invitations about the orientation. They track it to make sure they take the code of ethics. Uh, and then I work with the chair to make sure we have our speakers on board, what we're going to talk about. We do switch it up quite often. Um, so my, the chair of my education committee handles the orientation. Awesome. It is a lot of coordinating. I know the more speakers you have, we know uh, here at CAR, the, the more challenging the wrangling can be, but it's obviously, for to your points, uh, well worth it often. So um, again, any, any other words of advice for maybe uh, associations that are listening in who want to kind of revamp and revitalize their new member orientation? Um, I'd like to say that um, the thing that helped me a lot is uh, my fellow AEs. Um, I remember going to a to a, a conference where they had I'm I think it was called I'm a new AE now what I believe it was titled cleverly titled whoever did that and sitting in and not only taking in all the great information that my fellow AEs had being a, a new AE but on top of that every single AE there including the panelists gave me their number, told me to call them. Obviously we compared sizes of associations. So if you're a small association like, like ours, um, you can give me a call to kind of get ideas on how to run the orientation. But if you have a larger one like Carla at Laguna or what have you, obviously you, you can reach out to her because she's going to have a different type of you know, idea on how to run certain things at, at that association, including the member orientation. But every single time I asked a question, I, I was I was constantly helped with my fellow AE. So definitely I, I suggest reach out to any and all of us and uh, like like I did and I still do to this day. Um, and just uh, it's a phone call away and every single AE has always helped so much. And we, we, we you know I, I really appreciate it and I don't I, I'm more than happy to you know help uh, in any way that I can on, on, on my end. So I'm just glad to be here with you guys. Thank you. Well said, Ruben. Um, and I am grateful to be here with all of you. Uh, our AE community rocks. It does. Kimberly, I totally agree. I, I know I can speak for, for my team and I when we say that I think the AE community has never been stronger. I think we have the, and, and this goes to the association staff too. I mean, as AEs, we're only as strong as our staff. And so I think the community of association staff AEs is stronger than ever. And I love to see how cooperative 
um, and connected you all are to each other, it, it makes the biggest difference for all of us on all levels of the organization. So um, with that, I am going to just thank the panel for being here and I'll let Peg, I'll, I'll give it back to Peggy for any uh, additional questions you may want to, to ask and to wrap up. I think we've covered everything and I just can't say enough about our panelists and thank all of you for being willing to share because to Ruben's point, we learn more from each other than we learn from any other resource. And I'm planning for next year on the AM 101s to do about half of them as panels. So if anybody has any ideas of panels you'd like to see, things that would help you with your job, please feel free to email me at peggym at car.org because I would love some new and fresh ideas ideas. So thank you again for everybody for sharing. And I will send a follow-up email with the meeting materials and the link to the uh, recorded session probably tomorrow morning. So thanks everybody for attending panelists. And Emily, thank you so much. Thank you.